Hi, my name is Derek, and this is DC to Daylight, where we explore electronics operating in the realm of DC, audio frequencies up into RF, and the visible spectrum of light. Today, we're taking a look at Ohm's Law. Without the benefit of Ohm's Law, amplifiers wouldn't amplify. It's like the amplifier's not amplifying. Transistor switches wouldn't switch. It's like these transistors aren't switching. And we wouldn't be able to limit current, causing premature failure of components. Three, two, one. So what is Ohm's Law? Simply put, it explains mathematically the relationship between current, voltage, and resistance. Now today we have a pretty firm grasp on the concept, but in the early 1800s, electricity was still somewhat of a mystery. The ohm is the base unit for quantifying resistance, where one ohm is equal to one amp of current flow with one volt applied across the device, or wire, device under test, whatever you want to call it. It's named after German physicist Georg Ohm, who began a series of experiments in the 1820s to try and understand why a voltage decreased with the lengthening of a wire, okay, if you measure it at the other end. He set forth using nothing more than a rudimentary voltage source, some differing lengths and diameters of wire, and a galvanometer, or a voltmeter. Now in electronics, we typically wrap our heads around circuits by using a water analogy, where voltage equates to water pressure, current is represented by flow rate per unit time, and a constriction represents opposition to current flow. That's our resistor. So let's take a look at an example of a series circuit. I have a pump, which acts as my voltage source, some tubing, which stands in as low resistance wire, and three clamps, which are our resistors. I've added some dye to the circuit, and now as I run the pump, you can see the flow rate where current is the same throughout the entire circuit. This is an important concept to keep in mind. In a series circuit, all elements experience the same current flowing through them. However, the voltage across devices in a series circuit can vary depending on its resistance. Now, what about a parallel circuit? Okay, let's imagine that we have two resistors in parallel. One is a low value resistor without much opposition to current flow, maybe it's one ohm. And a high value resistor, let's say 100,000 ohms. When I run the drill, the die flows freely through the low resistance path around the circuit and also through the one ohm resistor. But note that the 100K resistor impedes current flow because there's a larger restriction. From this, we can deduce that if voltage is held constant, as resistance increases, current decreases. Conversely, as resistance decreases, current increases. This is the fundamental relationship that was discovered by Dr. Ohm in 1825. At the time, current resistance and voltage were being defined, and the original formula was written as C is equal to I over R, but later changed to the formula that we're all familiar with today, current is equal to voltage divided by resistance. Now, Ohm published his findings in the Galvanic Circuit Investigated Mathematically in 1827. Really good read. In it, he explains the fundamental relationship between current, resistance, and voltage. And it's interesting the terminology that they used at this time because they were just really trying to understand uh, the fundamentals of electricity. So it's kind of comical. All right, so for example, if I want to find voltage and I know current and resistance, uh, we would solve it as V is equal to current times resistance. If I want to find current, I is equal to voltage divided by R. Okay, current is equal to voltage divided by resistance. Resistance is equal to voltage divided by current. We're simply rearranging the equations. Now there are other derivations that are useful to find the power or how much heat a device is dissipating. And one useful one is P is equal to power is equal to current times voltage. Another is the I squared R law, which is very important if you know the current and resistance but you don't know the voltage, you can still figure out how much power a device is dissipating. Here's an image showing you all of the different derivations for Ohm's law that might be useful to you, but we've shown you the most common ones here today. A common practice in test and measurement systems is finding an unknown resistance by forcing a known current through a device under test and measuring the voltage across that device. In fact, that's how your multimeter works. It forces a known current through the test leads and through the device under test, usually a resistor or a semiconductor device, and measures the voltage across the terminals and from that uses Ohm's law to calculate the actual resistance and display it on the screen. So let's take a closer look at this application and see if we can replicate it on the bench. For this demonstration, I'm using a Keithley source measure unit or SMU. This one is the Keithley 2450 source meter. It has the ability to source current and voltage as well as read both. Now I know what you're thinking, something like this is outside of my budget. Spoiler alert, 
In a couple of weeks, we're going to make our own standalone current source for the bench so that you can make pretty accurate four wire measurements with a simple DMM. So make sure to come back. Now, the cool thing about this instrument is that it shows you how much current you're forcing and how much voltage it's reading across the resistor under test. So let's attach our unknown resistor. If I can get it. Uh, now that that's attached, and let's see what we get. So we're sourcing about 10 microamps of current and reading just under one volt across the resistor. So using Ohm's law, we divide the voltage by the current and that comes out to just under 100,000 ohms. In fact, if I switch the display to show resistance, you can see the calculated result, 99.965 thousand ohms. And that is in fact what I have attached here is a 100 kilo ohm resistor and that happens to be within its 5 volt tolerance range. Okay, so that's a large value resistor. What about a small value? Let's clip our probes to the lead of this guy. We get 1.298 ohms. Uh, I actually attached a 1 ohm resistor to the test setup. So what's going on here? Well, as it turns out, the lower the resistance, the more parasitic resistance in the test setup starts to creep in. This is where the 4 wire Kelvin measurement comes in handy, but we'll talk more about that in the next episode. Well, that sums up this episode. I hope you've learned a lot about Ohm's Law, and I hope the water analogy is burned into your brain and helps you uh, kind of visualize what's actually happening in a circuit. If you have uh, any instances where Ohm's Law was useful to you in your career or daily life hacking and making, uh, let me know at element14.com in the community and also element14.com forward slash DC to daylight. Hit me up in the comments down below. That's it for me. Have a good one.